Hey there. Finding time to paint is a challenge that most artists face at one time or another. Um, I, I don't think there's anybody I know of who aspires to paint who hasn't run into that at one time or another. And I, I think that one of the things that we have to remember is number one, to prioritize painting. So I, I like to use the analogy of those instructions we get from the stewardess on the, uh, or the stewards on a flight where they point to the masks that drop down and remind you that you need to put the mask on yourself first before helping anybody else that's along with you. It's really a matter of self-care. If we don't prioritize painting, and it's something that's a real driving force for us, we're not going to be nearly as effective as people, as members of a family, as members of a team. It really is about self-care. It's not selfish to want to find that time to paint. I remember when my daughter was in middle school, eh, maybe sixth grade, something like that, and she was old enough for me to leave her alone in the afternoon at the house and I was in a really squirrely mood for whatever reason work had been hairy and I just had not had time to get the, to the studio to go paint she looked at me after about the fourth really squirrely comment and said mom you have got to go paint you just need to go to the studio you need to leave the house out of the mouths of babes come real wisdom she was right the reason that I was squirrely was I was really frustrated. And that frustration gets in the way of your relationships. So there's a real price you pay when you don't pursue your creative outlet, whether it's writing, re, um, knitting, crocheting, painting, sculpting, whatever it is that's your creative outlet, you got to prioritize it in some way. So you need to schedule some small blocks of time around that. And I, I like to tell my students, you need to paint every day that you eat. Now that doesn't mean that you've got to schedule in an eight hour block of time every day to work on a four by six foot painting. Not everybody can do that. And there's a lot that can happen in small increments of time. So that little bit of something that you do every day could be something as small as working in your sketchbook, doing a couple of thumbnails while you're watching TV with the family after dinner. It doesn't have to be the big earth shattering action in the studio. It can be a small action because small actions add up over time. So if we haven't met before, I'm Mary Gilkerson. I'm an artist and educator with a studio here in Savannah. And I like to share regular tips on how to build a sustainable, creative life. We have a free group over in Artwork Living, so be sure to check that out when you have a chance. Oops, I see some comments coming in. So I want to welcome people to today's broadcast. So, hey, Dee Dee and Miguel and young Eric. Good. Good to see y'all. Excellent. I see Melanie C. Awesome. So thank y'all for joining me here today. So what I want to want to think about are some of the things that you can do that will help you find that time to paint. One of that the first things is finding those small blocks of time. And truly, what's calendared will get done. So pull your calendar out and set at least 30 minutes a day to do something creative. Doesn't have to be producing a Leonardo da Vinci scale work of art. It could be sketching. It could be prepping canvases. It could be um, doing all sorts of the steps that lead to the bigger paintings down the road. One of the other things that you should do is think about making it easy to get started. You know, one of the, the best pieces of advice I've ever heard about exercising and building the exercise habit 
is to lay your exercise clothes out the night before so that you put them on first thing in the morning. You're more likely to go walk then. That is so true. That's one of the ways I built the walking habit. Well, you can do the same thing for your painting habit. Make it easy to get started. And how does that work? Well, one of the things that you can do is find a place to set your materials out so that you don't have to take them out and put them away each time. Now, you may have small children around. Totally get that. That means you need a drawer where you can put stuff in and put it away from them where they can't get to it. But you can still organize it so that it's easy to lift out and just dive right on in. Find a space where you can claim it for your creative work. It doesn't have to be a freestanding studio. Great if you have a freestanding studio. It doesn't even have to be an entire room. It could be a corner of your kitchen, your living room, your dining room, your spare bedroom wherever, but claim that space. That will make it so much easier to get started because you don't have to go find a clear space to work in. Another thing that really helped me when I was facing this challenge was to work smaller. So I had taken on a whole lot more extra administrative work at the college at one point. And so I didn't have the big blocks of time in the afternoon to go paint that I was used to. But working for 30 minutes or an hour every evening meant that I got my creativity going and I got to feeling less stuck. Because if you're not doing your creative stuff, if you can't find the time to paint, you're going to feel stuck. And that builds and builds and builds and builds. Don't want that happening. In fact, one of the things that prompted me to pick this topic to talk about is that it's a... a word that kept coming up in a question that I sent out to my email subscribers about what was their biggest challenge right now. And over and over again, I got emails back that just said time, time, time to paint, time. It's clearly an issue for a lot of people. Schedule that small block of time, make it easy to get started, and think about working smaller. One of the advantages of working smaller is it's faster to complete it. And because of that, you have a, a feeling of accomplishment when you're able to get something done. So working smaller could be working on a small painting. It could be working in your sketchbook. So when I had a, a retreat last month for painters, we did a virtual retreat. We got to talking about how to implement that, do something towards your painting every day. And one of the key ways to do that, one of the easiest ways to do that is to pull out your sketchbook and a pencil and make a thumbnail every day. Make a quick sketch every day. You'll be surprised if you do this how far you can go, how quickly you can begin to see progress if you do a sketch every day. Think about doing something small, even if it's only 10 or 15 minutes. You're going to see great progress if you do that. I hope this has been helpful, and if it is, I'd love for you to pass it on to a friend who might need to hear it and enjoy it. And I'd love for, also love for you to join me tomorrow morning at about 10.30 right here on my Facebook page when I'm going to talk about how to form the painting habit. So let's see what questions we've got here in the feed. Hey, Leslie Miller, you're welcome. Leslie says, I need the gentle kick and reminder. You've heard this from me before, Leslie, um, but it never hurts to hear it again. You know, I need to remind myself of it at times too. Melanie says, absolutely. And yes, Dee Dee, I'm glad that's helpful. Yeah, um, playing music helps me when I'm trying to get creative. Uh, it's a great way to spur yourself on when you're making art. What are some of the things that you do, Dee Dee, to find time to paint? So even before you get in there and put the music on, how do you find the time to paint? What are some of the things that y'all do to find time to paint? Yes, Miguel says every day. Absolutely. It makes a huge, big difference. Let's see. Oh, hey, Sue Holderman McFadden. It's good to see you. 
I'm glad you're finding your way back. You've had a lot going on, so you get an excuse in there. And sketching most days is a great way to really begin to work your way back into it. So if you are already sketching most every day, you're well on your way to working your way back into it, to being back there. Awesome. I love that you're doing that. And thank you, Carson. Carson's posted the link to the Artwork Living Facebook group here in the comments for anybody who would like to grab it. Yeah, Melanie says, I schedule time every day. Sometimes it's sketching. Absolutely. You know, 30 minutes a day with the sketchbook, oh, you're going to see tremendous improvement. And it feeds into your painting. You might think, well, drawing doesn't have that much to do with my painting. It absolutely does. And if you're working on thumbnails and compositions, it makes it so much easier once you do have the time to get your paints out and get started. Awesome. Yeah, Melanie says, I get dressed in my painting clothes every morning. That is stellar. That's exactly like that recommendation that people think about putting their exercise clothes on at the beginning of the day. Put your paint clothes on. If you don't have designated paint clothes, I highly recommend that you have designated paint clothes. Otherwise, you'll end up wearing your paint on all your clothing, which is not great. So watch that. Christine Francis says, thanks. You are most welcome, Christine. Um, she said, I really needed to hear this. Lots of good ideas to help me get started again. Making time to sketch every day is such a good idea. It is. It's something really relatively easy. So especially if you have a family, if you're spending any family time in the evening doing something like binging on The Crown on Netflix, anybody doing that? Raise your hand up and doing that. I don't know why I have not done it before now. I digress. But if you're binge watching something, whether it's sports or Netflix, whatever, Pull your sketchbook out while you're having that family time is a great way to work some sketch time in. You can do quick thumbnails while you're sitting with everybody else and while you're having family time. So think about how you can put some things together to make it easier to get started. And... Yeah, Cheryl McClure says music is a great starter. It is. Hey, Leah, it's good to see you. And consider this a big push. You need to, to get in there and make some of those prints you've been talking about. Get those sketches going first. And hey, Lynn Price, it's good to see you. Yeah, the sketchbook um, really, really works. So get those sketchbooks going, y'all. And if you want to, share some sketchbook images into the comments. I'd love to see what y'all get accomplished that way. And let's see. Yes, the sketchbook takes the pressure off a lot. Yeah, Lynn, I'm right there with you. I find I'm, I'm at my best creatively in the morning and with a cup of coffee in hand. Now, when I say, you know, schedule blocks of time, you need to think about when you're at your most creative. Some people are early morning birds. I've become that. Some people are night owls. I was that in a, an earlier time period. Don't feel like you have to conform to one or the other. One is probably going to be your norm and natural default. Pick it, whatever it is that's you, and work that in but don't try to force a time on yourself that doesn't feel normal or natural so if you're a morning person get up just a little bit earlier if you're a night owl then do this get that sketchbook out instead of just watching the late night comedy so amber awesome Let's see if I'm missing any else. Hey, Fiona Brown, it's good to see you. Yeah, Lynn Price says every shirt becomes a paint shirt. I, I feel the same way in many ways. I try to hide my half decent stuff from myself so that I don't just pick up a paintbrush or a paint knife with good clothes on. Um, it's hard to do when your studio is in your home. Almost everything becomes paint clothing at that point. And Laska says, are you planning any painting challenges in the near future? Yes, 
We are probably not right before Christmas because everybody or the holidays, everybody has a full plate. Um, but we will be doing one probably in January. But I think it's easy to create your own challenge as well. Maybe we'll do a little quick one. We'll have to see. Um, Melanie says, mention your live thingy for tomorrow again. Okay. Um, I'm going to go live here again tomorrow morning at 1030. Live tomorrow, Saturday, if you're joining later. Saturday, November 21st at 1030 in the morning. So I'll be right here. I will put a post out that is a notification so that people can see that. Um, oh, Alaska tips for those working nine to five or eight to five. I, I think that there are two ways that you can approach that. If you are uh, a early birder, get up a half an hour earlier and do some sketching with a cup of coffee in hand, you know, work with your sketchbook. If you're a night owl, get your sketchbook out at that time. Don't try to force yourself into painting four hours at night when you're working eight to five. I, I did that at one point. I used to have my studio at home when my daughter was little and I was still teaching at the college. I had an eight o'clock class in the morning. I would go into the studio and paint after dinner after I put my daughter to bed. And suddenly I would find it was two o'clock in the morning and I had to get up early to teach and get her to school. That didn't work really well. So I would not recommend trying to schedule a big block of time when you've got eight to five. I think what works better if you've got that eight to five, nine to five commitment is to get 15 to 30 minutes of sketchbook time in on either end of the day and then give yourself a bigger block of time to paint on the weekend. But don't make yourself feel frustrated by not being able to get that big block of time in during the week. You can get a lot done by doing a lot of the little prep things during the week so that on the weekend, all you do is dive right on in. Then you can paint and flow. So think about, for example, you could be doing thumbnails and composition studies um, three days of those weeks. You could be figuring out what photograph you're going to work from if you're working from photos on a couple of days and cropping those to get the compositions. You could be setting up your paint area so that you're ready to start on Saturday and all you have to do is pick up your painting knife. Any of those things that make it easy to get started so that all you have to do is dive in. That's a great question. Dennis says he has a special shirt just for cooking tacos too. Ah, Dennis, I have a friend, a good friend who is a taco king. I think he would say he probably has multiple taco shirts. I totally get that. And yeah, Melanie says mid-morning is best for her. Kirsten Lee, yeah, Dennis, you just raised the bar. Now I want a designated taco shirt. Yeah, I'm expecting to see lots of taco shirts later. Alaska, great question. Tomorrow morning, 1030 Eastern time. So I'm on the East Coast, literally. I'm about 10 minutes from the ocean. So I'm on the East Coast. The time zone is Eastern time. 10.30 tomorrow morning, Eastern. Thank you, Melanie, for posting that in there. Hey, Peggy from Houston. It's good to see you. And Laska says, I'm suffering from serious artistic constipation. Uh, been there, my friend. She says, thank you for the great suggestions, especially planning during the week. You really got to get some of that out. It sounds funny when we say that, but it, it really can impact your health. If you've got this creative urge and you can't get it out, um, you can become really snappy like I did with my daughter when she was in middle school. You know, people, you're not pleasant to the people around you and you'll find you're not as effective at work either because you begin to resent work. So if you can find those little tiny blocks of time, it'll ease that f constipation a lot. I love the way you phrased that. It's so true. That's exactly what it is. Casey says, I'm going to try to find myself some time to paint today. It's going to be my birthday present to myself. 
awesome idea, Casey. You paint every almost every day anyway. But again, happy birthday. And ah, Alaska says I have dozens of half done projects. Go through those. That could be your paint time one one morning, Alaska. Go through those and decide which ones are ones you're gonna work on, redo. Put those in a box and decide which ones are ready to be totally redone, paint overs, and put those in another section. And that in itself will give you a little bit of clarity feeling around that. Hey, Betty Mallorca, it's good to see you. Leslie says, I too find if I do not paint, I get snappy. I think that's most of us, Leslie. I, I think that sometimes we're just not aware that that's what it is that's getting in the way. For sure. Diana says, what is the Facebook page again? The page for the live tomorrow is this same page, Mary Gilkerson. So Carson, if you can pop that into the comments there, that would be fantastic. But it's just Mary Gilkerson Art. I think I can do that too. It's facebook.com slash Mary Gilkerson Art. Oops, I can't even spell my own name. I do that all the time. Yeah, um, a time for after Thanksgiving. I think that time between Thanksgiving and Christmas can be very stressful. And certainly this year, there's a lot of other stuff to add to the stress. And I think that working on your painting, working on your art, is one way to navigate through the chaotic, stressful times that we're in. I firmly believe that we can paint our way through almost any challenge or problem. And if there were ever a time where we needed to paint our way through things, this is it. 2020 has been a bear. So if you can find some time to get that creative urge fulfilled, you'll be making your own contribution to the health and wellness of all the people around you. So it's not selfish to do that. Go ahead and schedule a little bit of time for that. And also help us get through what's going to be a really different Christmas and Thanksgiving this year. So bring your painting to the table during that time. I think that's a great way to maneuver through that. Yeah, Casey says that do-overs and paint-overs are great for those days. You don't know what you want to paint. I totally agree. I have a whole box, both in my studio in Columbia and here in Savannah, that are the do-overs. We call it the redo bin. And if something that I just couldn't figure out how to resolve or that I hated it when it got to that point, and it's a great place to dive in when you're just not sure what to paint. When I go to those... I usually just give them a light sanding first to oil out and then just dive right on back in. So that's a great place to get yourself jump started there. And thank you, Carson. Yeah, Leah, I hear you on that. Leah says, I feel like the job zaps me, but my creative thoughts are always running. Just need paint and a barren and I should be good. Yeah, Leah does printmaking too. And I think if you have those two things, that'll help. Just work, I, work with your sketchbook for a little while, Leah, because when you have that nine to five job and you have a kid, um, because your son is now a, a teenager and takes time too, um, take that sketchbook out and work in that for a while and then schedule some bigger blocks on those times when you've got a day or two off. Mary Ann, you are more than welcome. She says, I've run out of art space for new paintings. An organized system for storage before things sell would be very helpful. Ooh, um, Mary Ann, I am not the world's best organizer. My system for storage for paintings before they sell is I actually, it's not as bad as I make it sound. I store them upright because paintings shouldn't be stored laying flat with board between them so that they won't get scratched. And I try to either organize them by date and time or organize them by theme 
so that I can find them more easily. Christine says, I do six by six, 20 minute paintings. Yeah, that's a great way to go. You know, we do in the painting challenge, um, five day painting challenge, we've done the 20 to 40 minute paintings. And that's a great way to get some painting time in without having to strive for perfection and just get your creative juices going. Yeah, virtual school is a challenge for a lot of parents right now. And I have a lot of sympathy. Uh, I didn't virtual school my or homeschool my daughter, but my parents homeschooled me and my sisters for a period of time when we lived in England. And I remember how much time it took for my mother to organize that and for my father to get in there and help us with the subjects that were really his special area. So cut yourself some, some extra slack there and really focus on those things that you can do that don't take a whole lot of time. Five minutes in a sketchbook is way better than no minutes in a sketchbook. Yeah, Lynn says uh, one, another idea is to buy canvas pads and mark them off into sections. You know, I, what I like even better than the canvas pads, Lynn, are the, is the um, Arches oil paper because Arches oil paper is prepped and ready to go and it's archival. A lot of those canvas pads aren't. But then what I do, and this is one of the things that I suggest people do inside of my painting course, is to take tape and divide that sheet of Arches oil paper into fourths so that you can do your really quick short studies on those and not worry about whether it's going to be a perfect painting or not. But absolutely, all of those things really help a lot. So I'm going to have to hop off. Got to go walk the dog. Thank you all for joining me here today. And remember to pass this on if it seems like something that a friend of yours who's also a creative needs to hear. I would love that. And I hope you can join me tomorrow, 1030 a.m. Eastern Time. Take care, everybody, and happy painting. Remember, paint on. Paint your way through it. Bye-bye for now.